Brave Australian man punches attacking kangaroo in the face to save his dog's life. During this hunting trip, Tonkins came upon a terrifying sight. His beloved dog Max gripped in the headlock of a kangaroo. Marco Festa Bianchet, a National Geographic explorer who studies kangaroos, stated succinctly that Tonkins was in danger of disembowelment. He was in danger, but Tonkins either didn't know or didn't care. He knew what he had to do. This is a typical scene from the Taronga Western Plain Zoo, known affectionately as the Dubbo Zoo in Australia. It's a place for peaceful observation of animals, a place that ostensibly finds the utmost in professional caretakers and zoologists. Yet in June 2016, one employee of this zoo performed a violent act against an animal in the wild, igniting a firestorm of controversy. When kangaroos fight each other in nature, they fight viciously, standing on their hind legs and punching each other with a set of claws. As such, the image of a boxing kangaroo became a national symbol for Australia. Regrettably, this fighting spirit often moved from symbolic to literal as humans boxed unwitting kangaroos for sport and entertainment. All of these factors came into play in the story of Greg Tonkins. Tonkins, pictured here on the far right, worked as a zookeeper at the aforementioned Taronga Western Plains Zoo. Animals were a big part of his life. He belonged to the Australian Pig Doggers and Hunters Association. Here, his dog Max poses with pride at a high jumping contest. In the summer of 2016 in New South Wales, Tonkins took a group of human friends and his pup friend Max on a boar hunting trip. This trip was particularly special for the person on Tonkins' right in this photo. That man was Caleb Barwick, a 19-year-old suffering from Ewing sarcoma, a rare form of bone cancer most commonly seen in children and adolescents. Barwick and his girlfriend, Brandy Wadwell, pictured here, had set up a GoFundMe to help offset medical bills. Tonkins set up the hunting trip in part to lift his spirits. During this hunting trip, Tonkins came upon a terrifying sight. His beloved dog Max gripped in the headlock of a kangaroo. Marco Festa Bianchet, Geogra a National Geographic explorer who studies kangaroos, stated succinctly that Tonkins was in danger of disembowelment. He was in danger, but Tonkins either didn't know or didn't care. He knew what he had to do. He punched the kangaroo square in the face, effectively saving Max. As far as is known, this was the end of Tonkins and the kangaroos quarrel. There's people in social media saying, I know men like that, I bet they killed it afterwards. But that's just ridiculous, said one of Tonkins' hunting friends. He only threw the punch to redirect the animal, and afterwards, there were a few nervous and relieved laughs. And then we just went on with getting Kayla Matoner. As videos of Tonkins punching the kangaroo went viral, reactions were swift and intense. PETA Australia condemned both Tonkin's punch and the initial hunting expedition itself. The animal rights organization stated in a Facebook post, punching a kangaroo in the face is neither brave nor funny. It's illegal, as is harassing native wildlife with dogs. Due to personal threats from internet users, Tonkin's became afraid to leave his house. It made me sick, said Tonkin's hunting partner, when people were wishing this family man and dog died, when the kangaroo wasn't even hurt. Other cultural reactions were more tongue-in-cheek, including the graffiti tribute. Unfortunately, Barwick, who Tonkins had planned the trip for, succumbed to the disease on December 1, 2016. A few days earlier, on November 27, Barwick and Wadwell got married in Barwick's hospital room. On his GoFundMe page, Wadwell marveled at how little the amount of pain Barwick experienced seemed to affect his positive attitude. What do you think? Check out the video of Tonkins punching the kangaroo and decide for yourself. Did Tonkins do his duty protecting his dog, or did he go too far when he attacked the kangaroo? Tonkins is not the only person to try and fight an animal out of protective instincts. An unnamed woman in Liberty Isla, Texas, found a large snake crawling near her home. She decided to douse it in gasoline and set it ablaze. Unfortunately, she also set her house ablaze. She just didn't like snakes, I guess, said Liberty Isla Fire Chief David Wesselhoff. In Lee County, Georgia, 54-year-old Larry McElroy saw an armadillo near his house. His response was to draw a 9mm gun and shoot the animal. The animal did die, but the bullet ricocheted off the shell and into McElroy's mother-in-law, 74-year-old Carol Johnson. She was sitting in her recliner in the mobile home about 100 yards away. Luckily, she sustained no serious injuries. 
professional surfer Mark Fanning was competing in the J-Bay Open in South Africa when disaster reared its head in the form of a shark attack. I just had this instinct that something was behind me, said Fanning, describing the abrupt arrival of a shark in his path. And then all of a sudden, I felt like I started getting pulled underwater. How did Fanning escape danger? In his words, he punched it in the back. This quick-thinking attack is, in part, why Fanning was able to escape with just a small scratch on his hand, which surfer Kelly Slater posits from the punch. The rest of the event was canceled shortly after the incident. Take a look at the entire nerve-wracking shark attack here. But be warned, the images are intense, and the commenters say some quite warranted strong language. In Alberta, Canada, Will Gibb took his dog Sasha and Mongo to a neighborhood Tim Hortons donut and coffee shop. That's when, in a flash, a cougar emerged from the woods and began attacking Sasha. Gibb acted immediately. I saw something wrapped around Sasha, so I ran up and punched it in the side of the head. At this point, I realized it was a cougar. Gibb and Sasha did their best to fight off the cougar, with Gibb continuously punching. Then the cougar set its sight on Mongo. I got between him and the cougar and just started swinging and screaming at it, said Gibb, and then I reached down for the closest big stick that I could find and ran back into the trees to go fight the cougar. Gibb wound up chasing the cougar away and getting his dogs away safe. When a bear bounded upon his dog Lacey in Placer County, California, Carl Moore wasn't about to let it intimidate him. I ain't running from nothing. I never have in my whole life and I ain't gonna start now, he said to CBS Sacramento. Moore, with the assurance of witness, punched the bear in the face, sending it on its way. It's best to hear Moore tell the rest of the story himself. He's a charismatic figure, shading his experience with braggadocious turns of phrases, even if there's a chance he's exaggerating the truth. A Georgia man named David Quarterman took his dogs Sheba, Kush, and Cody out near some water like he always did, and then Sheba was horrifically grabbed by an alligator who held onto the dog tightly with its jaws. Quarterman rushed into the water and punched the alligator straight in the eye. When the alligator raised up out of the water with my dog in his mouth, he looked like something out of a Hollywood horror movie, said Quarterman. That adrenaline thing came over me. I think most people would have done the same. Sheba suffered from mild wounds and recovered fully. Johnny Bolton jump kicked a bear reads like a bizarre 80s action movie, and yet it's real life. When Bolton's Lake Tahoe, California cabin was broken into by the creature, he did a jump kick, triggering martial arts training from age eight. This move was enough to startle the bear into leaving. I didn't make a decision, I just kicked, said Bolton, explaining his instantaneous decision. I face death, and that's a strange feeling when you do. And then you walk away with a big scratch. In Corpus Christi, Texas, Jennifer Sutcliffe and her unnamed husband found a venomous rattlesnake near their home. The husband quickly beheaded the snake with a shovel, but when he bent down to pick up the remains, the rattlesnake's severed head bit him, injecting him with venom. They immediately went to the hospital and he recovered.